Alpina is a very special case for us. Obviously, she's unfortunately the koala that did pass away at the very start of the project here at Longleat. So she passed away around December last year, um, unfortunately down to oxalate nephrosis, um, which was kidney function failure. So Alpina's death, while it was tragic, it, we've actually been, it's actually been really useful for our research work um, and will hopefully make a difference to the wild population in quite a short period of time. So what we've been doing is sequencing all of her DNA and what we think we've found is the genetic basis for the kidney disease she died from. So oxalate nephrosis is uh, really common in South Australian animals. What happens is they get precipitation of oxalate crystals in their kidneys and it means they develop kidney failure. About Probably about 30% of the wild animals that get handed in sick to vet hospitals down there have the disease, so it's really, really common. I'm really sure that that's a genetic disease, and it's probably a consequence of them just being quite genetically restricted from that hunting pressure historically. But we haven't known what the gene is or what the mutation is that causes that. So one of the things we've been doing is uh, sequencing animals in the north and animals in the south using what's called next generation sequencing technology. You basically stick the DNA in a big machine and it reads all of the DNA from the individual animal and we've been doing that for a few different animals and that's what we did with Walpina's DNA and what we think we've, what we've found is actually the genetic mutation that we think is the cause of the oxalate nephrosis. That's really quite exciting because that means we can now go back and have a look at uh, whether the animals in South Australia, whether they've all got that gene that's the problem or whether they have a mix of it. If they have a mix of it, then we can look at applying selective breeding to try and minimise the oxalate nephrosis we're seeing. We're also doing some work, other work on the koala retrovirus, which is different in the north and the south as well. So we've got work ongoing at the moment. It's been hugely helpful to our research program and it's been Really, I mean, Will Pinner's death was a tragedy, but it's been really good to be able to use that for something positive, to be able to work out the mutation of the gene, the disease she's died from, and to be able to take that forward and feed that back into the conservation back in Australia has been really, really nice. Koalas are world renowned for being a lazy animal. They sleep for between roughly 17 to 20 hours a day. They sleep six to 700 feet up a tree and they blend in. Their camouflage is sublime considering they live in a green tree with brown bark and they're gray, okay, but they vanish. So it makes researching and actually studying them exceptionally hard for an animal which does sleep a lot. So having them in this environment, having four animals here on the ground, really being able to study everything from their feces, their urine, their behaviour, unfortunately the illness that comes with that, but obviously kind of overcoming those problems and, and learning from them. And, and generally just having them here allows us to really express to the, to the world effectively what the issues are. Because in Australia, they are that cute, cuddly fluff ball that we all know. But really, as you can see, they are much, much more.